Welcome to another episode of Revamped Outdoors. My name's Elliot. Today we're going to talk about a lure turner. You need to use lure turners if you make lures. News to me, I'm a soft plastics guy. All I did was shoot them, put them in water, bag them up. For the most part, last two years, check my channel. I stay away from hard baits. You know why I stay away from hard baits and hitting the mic? I stay away from hard baits because uh, it takes a lot of engineering design and testing. And that just seems like work. Don't know what else to say there. No real excuse. Hard baits do take a lot more design, practical experience. Uh, you need to test them quite a bit more than soft plastics. Usually if you come up with a good design in a soft plastic lure, that thing's just going to work. I mean, it's going to look good in the water as long as you take into a certain kind of steps to ensure that that design is similar to other designs, it'll work. So soft plastics to me are a little bit of a, you know, come up with a cool design, make the mold, shoot it, and it usually will work. Hard baits, not so much. You got a lot of different factors pushing on hard baits. Engineered Angler is a great channel to go check out. He goes through a lot of this kind of thing. So for me, it just seemed like a lot of work. But you know what? I feel like we've progressed in this channel. We've become better as anglers. We've become better as makers. So I think it's time we jump in to the deep end of the pool and we don't need our floaties. It's time to teach you to learn how to swim. Now don't be a wussy. <laughs> I mean, I do need my floaties, because I don't know. Oh, crap. <laughs> so this year, I decided, of all years, that I was going to focus on musky fishing and large northern pike. And you know why I did that? I don't know. I'm asking for real. Do you know why? So, if the state of Wisconsin ever lets me out of my house, that's what I'm going to try and do. We're going to try and go after big musky and pike this year, so I got a bunch of hard bait designs that will... Uh, be coming out shortly but i figured i would go over the design of the lure turner i made because maybe people are interested in that i will also post up the files on thingiverse because you know why not it's a very simple design very cheap and easy all you're going to need is a small section two foot section of half inch emt uh conduit so if you got that lying around that's you're already ahead of the game all you need is a 3D printer or a 3D print service. I bet the service would be pretty cheap, too, to print it out because it's not very complex of a thing. So I'll just show you that really quick. You're going to see some lures in here that I haven't quite talked about on the channel yet. Please don't worry. They're coming. I think I'm going to do those, record those videos right after this one so they'll be stacked up right next to them. So if you see some lures that you haven't seen before and want to know more about them, please subscribe. Maybe like the video even. It's YouTube. Gotta, I got to do it. I got to say it. So this is the design. I know it's kind of weird looking uh, at first glance, and it kind of doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I guess for context here, I have to say on this side, this is the main shaft. So this is just half-inch EMT conduit. It's a galvanized conduit, essentially. So this part, you're just going to buy, because why print that? It seems kind of wasteful. I have this sitting at about 16 inches, so there's a gap of 16 inches from each side of this. Um, what is that in metric? Very good question. Let's just take a rough, rough stab at it. 2.54 times 16. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's math. Or maths for my English European friends. Uh, 32 plus 8, roughly 40, roughly 40, 40 centimeters uh, long this is here roughly. Uh, what I've done here is I wanted this to be able to be printed on a bed that's 220 or less because I have an Anet A8 that I print most of the stuff on. I also have a CR10 that's uh, 300 by 300, but I figured if we could get it on a 220 bed, that'd be good. So this is obviously much larger than 220. Each one of these sections is roughly six inches. So we're looking at maybe a full span of about 14 inches so what I'll do here is I'll show you kind of what it looks like without the arms so each arm goes into the hub and then these clearances are modeled in for 0.2 millimeters so you're able to fit this arm into the here it'll go kind of over this little dimple in the back of the arm I could probably show you that right there so then you have this coupler little hub thing that these arms snap into. So that means that you can print one of these arms for 
well, eight times essentially, right, for the other side. Print eight of these and then just snap them into these. What I do is I just super glued them in there too. I printed the hub in 100% infill, but I printed the arms in like 10% and they've still held up really, really well. So to make the arms into this like triangle part here, all I did was made two separate bodies. I made this initial base body here and then I made another body, this vertical body here and I lofted between those two faces. These are just press pulls for the holes. I did a pattern on a path here, just ran it down. You can also do uh, create a pattern, a uh, rectangular pattern. You don't necessarily have to pull the top up on a rectangular pattern, so you can just copy that down with spacing. And I only had to do that once, obviously, for this design because four arms make, make up the hub and then the other four uh, arms on the other hub are standard it's just the same arms over there so only had to do that once and then moved them around with a pattern around a circle so i won't quite get into that i do have a lot of other tutorials and stuff if you want to check that out also youtube's really great showing you how to do stuff in fusion 360 much better than i am so i'll take this conduit out of there you can see that that's just a hole for those to go into the arms actually complete that so once you glue these in you can glue the EMT right into it and then it all becomes one piece so the back of the coupler here is just a disco ball motor mount so I have a disco ball motor you know I don't know what to tell you I bought it on eBay a long time ago it's like less than 20 bucks for one of those things you could also modify this too to uh, fit onto a rotisserie motor those are a lot more common they're also easily uh, 110 and they do have a really nice like more solid geared motor those do spin a little bit faster, but with the disco ball motor, it's pretty slow, I think, in my opinion. So we have the same thing on the other coupler as well. So on the back here, I just modeled in a place for a 608 bearing. I wanted like a press fit in there, but you could also glue it in. It's no big deal. If you, as long as you glue it in on the outside race of the bearing, it'll be just fine. And then I wanted to have a bearing in there because I didn't want the plastic to wear over over time so I figured the 608 was a great option because it's super cheap you can find them everywhere and then when I did that I just said well let's make a little stand for it right if we're gonna have it up that high might as well make a stand for it so made a little stand on that side so what you end up having is the disco the disco ball motor drives it over here John Travolta getting down doing it a little dance you know and then over here spins it and the stand just sits there. The stand holds itself in with the friction on the bearing down, the weight on the bearing. And then you can also you can take it off and move it somewhere or something like that. You don't have to have the stand attached to the whole turner. I like having the ability to take the stand off and take the turner out. I designed in this little pin for the shaft of the disco ball motor so it'll actually turn on there. But I can pull that pin, take the whole unit out, and then I can you know, paint on in really tough spots. Uh, having the whole unit in my hand. So then I can just put it back into the turner, start it turning so that epoxy levels out over time. So I like having all these holes that I modeled in here too for a couple of reasons. One is, is if you're doing smaller baits, you can always run a rubber band in between these holes and then do multiple lures. So you could have like two or three on each leg of this if you're doing very small lures. But even with larger ones, I can run it from like the fourth one over that lure sits in the middle and then what I can do is pull down from the middle maybe like the hook keep in the middle pull it down over here and that way the lure stays orientated up and down and that way it doesn't when this starts to rotate that lure doesn't flip over so it'll always keep a constant orientation on the x-axis essentially and that has really helped out quite a bit too well not sure what else to say about this one there it is disco ball motor maybe it's really hard to find those i've been looking around for the one that i have can't really find it anymore if you do see one similar make sure to snag it up because it's been a great motor for the last like eight years that i've had it apart from that you could always substitute in a rotisserie motor and then you could just modify that coupler really quick to just have an insert to go to a square peg instead of you know put the square peg in the round hole eh eh it'll work for this one you could do it so do the things all the things there's a lot of things and then these things too, you could do those things. Then the bell thing, because it's YouTube, you know, you know the bell thing, don't you? You could, you could do the bell thing. Okay, all right, until the next one, keep your amps up and wash your hands.
the back of the coupler here, I designed this up to fit on a disco ball mold. Why is that so hard to say? Disco ball motor? That ain't that hard to say. 